Carlson. Ritz Carlton. I want you to know you have a real class act tonight. <laughs> it's not the usual one. <laughs> okay. How many of you are, are, are new to the Canton Tea Party? You've never seen one of these presentations before. Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, the reason we do this is, is really quite simple. If you don't survive, it doesn't matter what your politics were. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other part of this is that when you, you look at, at, at what it takes to do something, most people go the Ritz Carlton way, and that's really expensive. And what we're going to do is just go the East Texas way, and that's where, where you make most of it yourself, and you, you don't put a great deal of money into it. Okay, do you know what a space blanket is? All right, this is a little space blanket, and they all come in these nice, well-folded, in these little tiny bags. <laughs> uh, you can never put them back in. I don't know how they get them in in the first place, but I'll, I'll pass this around because this is something that, that is, is really easy to put into an emergency kit or a, a glove compartment uh, or <clears throat> a woman's purse. And you, when you, you look at it, okay, space blanket, uh, it really should be titled the blanket from outer space because the space blanket was designed for the first communication satellite. And I have to explain what that was because when we think communication satellite, we think something that's you know, totally electronic and, and it, it's such high tech that you, you can scarcely believe it. This was different. It was a, a ball, 50 feet in diameter, made of that stuff. And when you, you put it in orbit, they inflated it and went poof like a basketball except 50 feet around no electronics at all there's nothing electronic to it to make the communication satellite work you bounce a signal off of it and have it go somewhere else that's a communication satellite are you impressed <laughs> i was impressed i was mostly impressed because this fabric is some of the, the, the lightest stuff that I've ever seen. And you can actually look right right through it. And can you see light through here? Uh -huh. that yeah you can. You can hold it up closer maybe. Hold it up closer? Okay. Oh yeah. Now you can Yeah. Oh my God. Well the reason you can see light is you have a very, very thin layer of aluminum that has been flash deposited on, on this Mylar fabric. And it, it doesn't come off, thank goodness, because otherwise it looked like you had aluminum dandruff. But uh, what it will do is to reflect 90% of the heat that, that uh, you, you have on either side of it. And, and the way to use it, can I get a volunteer? Sandra, would you mind doing this again? A deal? You were so good the first time. Now she tried this and she heated up in, in seven minutes. Her husband told me this is a record. It was before that, but I couldn't find him and I didn't have a watch. Oh. Okay, I'm going to set this down. Now, now will you just sit down, sit down on it? When you have someone that you're trying to get warm, you put this under their butt. Because uh, if they're touching the ground, they're going to be losing heat. Then you wrap it around them like this. And if you can, you put some around their head. I didn't uh, put it up and come up. No. Touch this in with your knees, if you would. No. you feel like a baked potato? No, I feel like a lollipop. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like a baked potato in a minute. It doesn't take long. I made a soup out of this when I was in Alaska, and, and uh, I put it on, and I lasted 10 minutes. And at that point, I was sweating tremendously, and my wife says, what are you doing? She said, you're dressed up like a baked potato. I said, I'm, I'm testing a suit to see if I can stay warm. She said, you, you put it together with freezer tape? I said, yes. She said, and you're trying to see if you can see warm? I said, but you're sweating. I'm sweating. And at that point, I realized this is a wonderful thing if somebody is cold. If, uh, if you do get cold, 
get one of these, wrap up in it, but don't plan to stay in it for very long because you'll just overheat right quick. Are you getting warm yet? Mm -hmm. You really are? I'm beginning to heat. You're beginning to heat? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I was in Alaska, they also had this in firefighting. Uh, one of the things I'm trained as is a wildfire fighter. And the idea of fighting fires is that you, uh, you put the fires out, but occasionally the fires don't get put out and they start advancing toward you. And they have one of these little things that you're supposed to get in and tuck it in all around you and let the fire go around you. And you're supposed to be safe. Uh, I did not test it. <laughs> I don't know if it worked. But I think the idea is a good one because it would reflect the heat from the outside and only 10% would get in. And uh, that might do the job. And the, the heat inside is what makes baked potato bake when you wrap it in foil. So, so this doesn't burn if you put a candle to it or something? Uh, it won't burn. Uh, it, it'll burn just like plastic, but it won't catch on fire and go poof. So we, uh, that's a nice thing. You also can you know, use it in a tent. Uh, you can put it underneath your, your sleeping bag, and that will reflect the heat up that, that you're producing but it would also keep the, the cold from the ground away from you. And then when it, it's been really cold, uh, I've put one around the top of the tent. And uh, that's really neat because uh, the, your breath freezes to it. And then when it gets warm, it all drips back down on you. <laughs> uh, they have sleeping bags that, that, uh, for, for uh, people to, to use this stuff. Don't get one. Because when you get get in one, you know, in about 10 minutes, you're going to feel really nice and warm, and uh, you'd do better if you could actually take this and, and and open it up and let some of the heat out. Are you getting warm yet? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> now, how warm are you? Not as warm as I was while well, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll just. But, yes, I'm I'm getting you're, toasty. You're yeah. getting toasty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you notice, by having it, it, it under your butt, that insulates you from the ground. And if you have it over your head, your head produces a, a lot of heat, and when it goes away, it goes away. Uh, so here, if you really wanted to keep Sandra warm, you'd have it over her head, poncho style. So I set something else up over here, and I thought you might be interested. Uh, this is a tent that I made out of two space blankets. It's put together with this wonderful stuff. You know what that is? Package, uh, package ceiling tape. You know how expensive that is? It's a six dollar tent. <coughs> and the package ceiling tape goes right down the middle and, and I used it on both sides and I even ran it around the edges so that it wouldn't fray. Uh, this tent doesn't look like much, but it's actually big enough to, to get inside. And you can go back there and sleep two people. Uh, the only hard part is down here. How do you keep the thing tied down? And I, I got some uh, Gorilla Tape, and it seems to work. Then I got some Army uh, Olive Draft Duct Tape called Polykin 231. It makes Gorilla Tape look like Scotch Tape. And uh, I think that's what I'll use for the next one. But then I'll, I'll just stake it into the ground, put the pole up, and I'm going to be comfortable. I'll put another space blanket on the bottom, and it's just like being a baked potato. But you have a $6 tent that you can roll up and stick in a small plastic bag. I don't know where you can get anything like that. And you make it yourself. Okay, uh, let, let me talk about uses for this. and. I've got, those of you who have the handout, it's the, the part in the middle, it says, other uses, put it under a sleeping bag to so reflect body heat upward, put inside the top of a tent, put body, to reflect body heat downward, and I made a note, condensation from your breath, and perspiration may make drips, probably a pint worth of drips, maybe a pint and a half, your sleeping bag will, will fill, uh, feel that and, and it'll uh, get nice and, and damp, but it doesn't matter because you'll still be warm. 
Uh, I set one of these up behind the campfire, and then it, it reflects the heat into my tent. Uh, that's an old-fashioned way to build a campfire, but this is a high-tech way to make one work. Uh, wrap up a cold person in an emergency to get her warm. Cover a window to prevent heat from escaping. This, this by the way, is something that works really well if you try to keep a room warm. You can take space blankets and tape them up on the windows. Uh, run a piece over, uh, put a piece in your boot bottoms to keep your feet warm. Now, this stuff will make your feet sweat, so you may end up, instead of having something that's the size of your foot, you have something smaller than that, just the middle of your foot, and it'll be enough to keep your whole foot warm. I use double-sided tape, and it works on this stuff. Uh, it says also, put a piece in top of your hat to keep your ball spot warm. Who are they talking about? <laughs> I hate it when my wife said it's my material. No. <laughs> uh, wrap warm food in it to keep it warm. Wrap cold food in it to keep it cold, cool. And I, I did this with the Boy Scouts. And one of the Boy Scouts looked at, that, at, at what I had and, and had warm wrap to keep it warm. And had another one wrap to keep it cool. And he looked at him and said, how, how does it know? <laughs> That's silly, isn't it? <laughs> but it's, it's the way things work. Uh, if you, you get little holes in it, you can repair them with tape. You do the same thing with big rips. Uh, if you're using it like this and it had, had been shotgun and had little, little holes all over, it wouldn't make a difference. This also is something that if you, you can use in your attic. There's, similar things to this that you're using, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess the, the, the basic answer is when you you have someone who's try, you're trying to get warm, let them tell you when you're, they're warm enough and believe them. Because if you don't know how warm this thing can get, how warm can get warm? Okay. Are you warm enough? Yeah. My hands are real warm. Okay. A while ago, I was sweating. Perspiring. Perspiring. Glowing. 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 Glistening. Uh, horses sweat, people okay. perspire, ladies glow. <laughs> okay. Uh, one last thing on this. They don't seem to go bad. Uh, I have some that are 20 years old, and they, they come out, and, and they're, they're just like the regular plastic. Uh, I thought that... that you know, they, they would go bad and, and be either uh, easily torn or, or what, but they don't seem to do that. Either that or I just got lucky with the brand 20 years ago. Uh, the prices on these, um, you can get them for about a dollar fifty each if you buy uh, 10 or 20 at a time. Uh, if you go down to a store, you'll pay two to three dollars each. But when you, you think about the ability to stay warm and also dry and have something in your pocket that's a whole lot better than a little poncho, um, I recommend these. Any questions? Karen? Um, is it okay for pets? Like if your dog chews on it, will it make the pet sick? Or? If your dog chews out, will it make the dog sick? Um, probably will. Almost anything a dog will chew on eventually will make him sick. And, and I think that wouldn't be any good for your dog. He you can't digest it, but you can tell how far it went in by looking for little silver things in the doggy doo <laughs> That is mylar plastic, didn't you say? Yes, it is, as far as I know. Yeah. So it would be digestible. So if they ate it, it could mess up their intestines. I think it could. Uh, don't eat it, okay? I, I have a question. What that looks good in here, but what happens in the wind? Yeah. Uh, what happens in the wind is, is, is that uh, it will keep you awake all night. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sound. Do that sound. Rattle. Rattle, rattle, rattle all night. Uh, the other part is that if the wind is too high, you just pull the pole out and, and collapse, and you're just as warm. Okay. And where do you get that polycan tape you 
he said was stronger than Gorilla Tape. I got it off of, uh, uh, I guess it was eBay this time. eBay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at the two inch wide variety, 60 yards long. And uh, if you buy it one roll at a time, it'll cost you like 15 bucks. And uh, I think I have $5.33 in it because I bought 24 rolls in a box. The quantity counts. Well, that same company makes drafting tapes, so I'm familiar with the brand name. They make all kinds of tapes. And yet, yes. Okay, if you have your regular tent, if you put it on the outside, would you get any effect out of that? Um, I never tried that. I, I tried it on the inside. To avoid I, the drips, you know? Well, maybe. to avoid the drips, that might be a good idea. I haven't tried it. I tried it on the inside because I, I could control where it was. Yeah, and then one other thing, do they make it in different thicknesses? I've only seen the one thickness. Because it might make good blackout curtains, you know, like a roller blind or something. Okay, they do take the same thing and, and apply it to a thicker uh, blanket. And uh, that one is, is like a tarp, but I, I don't use them because I, I want the part that works, not the, the support. Yeah. Guess that's it, Bob. Where do you get them? Where, where do you get it? You can get them in Walmart in, in the camping supplies area. Also, the open flame, you said, it, it, will it melt? It will, it will melt, but uh, in, if you put it in an open flame, it just melts like a plastic bag. I it, was, it would be very uh, dangerous to melt on your skin. Don't melt it on your skin. <laughs> well, the firefighters, they covered in it. I've, I've read an article that was coming. They did a hole, and they